it's been busy the last few weeks so I've been nibbling away at some little projects in the shop we've made a lot of progress and let's take a look inside as far as more bench space the miter station bench has been finished and I'm still working on the enclosure for the compound miter saw and we'll get some dust collection going in there as well on the right hand side of the shop done a lot of work got the OSB board up on those walls so we're fully enclosed here as far as the OSB board goes got the 6040 CNC that was in my basement out here and that guy is heavy had to take it apart and bring it out here in parts so we're set up here got our cooling water down the bottom right hand corner and I did a whole lot of configuration for the CNC control box as well maybe later on I'll show a video on that did the dust shoe here and this thing works really well got our dust control or our dust tubing line there and that brings us to today's project initially I was going to use a Harbor Freight two horsepower dust collector the reviews on those things are really really good and I wanted to get one of those in here the problem was or the challenge was this is not a big building it's about 12 by 20 and finding space for it was a little bit tough initially I was going to put it in that corner there where the wood storage is at the moment and everything in here right now is kind of messy because we're in mid project for several things but getting it over there would take up a lot of space for my wood storage and there really wasn't another place to put that big dust collector in here so we're lateraling over to this buck tool I could have put the Harbor Freight dust collector by the door here but again that would have taken up a lot of space and I didn't like the way that that looked or didn't think I would like the way that that would look so I picked up this buck tool this is a brushless motor it's remote controlled and it's got a pretty good collection rate I was surprised even with my testing I've got a fair amount of sawdust in that bag just from the CNC and a little bit of vacuuming up just working on our framing in and that's where the dust collector will sit it'll be on top of several layers of insulation over the floor so we'll get some more frames up and then get the plywood on the top and work on our micro jig dovetail cuts just keeping a close eye making sure everything is plumb and level I think we're looking pretty good here as far as the building goes there's an ever so slight dip in this corner underneath the CNC I noticed it when I built that bench over there as well as the corner of the bench over there so it's something just to keep in mind the driveway slopes down were blocked up really well the buildings not going anywhere everything is rock solid but we do have a just ever so slight fall off on that corner so making sure everything's tight and moving along that's a rough frame everything nice and tight I tend to overbuild benches and workshop stuff because this isn't going anywhere <laughs> and we might add a couple more supports in there at some point the three-quarter inch ply that's going to go on the top as well as the side or sides is going to give a lot more rigidity to a very strong base as it is so making progress nothing complicated just building out a box we're looking pretty good on the level front incidentally this level was given to me by my a friend of my dad's probably 30 years ago I have no idea how old it is it is still dead on straight and I've used this so much for so many projects I've got a special place in my heart for that old level could not order up a more beautiful Friday Boy, the weather is fantastic after about six days of heavy heavy rain we've got beautiful sunny skies lower humidity nice so this is the remaining piece from the bench 
plywood sections that I purchased several weeks ago. This is just AC three quarter inch plywood. And we're going to use this for the top of our enclosure here for the dust collector as well as the micro jig system. So let's take some measurements, cut that, and get that on there. There's our top three quarter inch plywood all screwed down. And we're looking pretty good right here. This is another another old friend of mine, this old level. Looking pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that remaining piece, that four foot long piece of AC ply, we're going to cut it, cut it long ways. And then we're going to put one piece on this side and one piece on the other side. I'm going to go down about 12 inches. As far as the end here, I'm not sure. I'm still thinking how I want to do this. The airbag for the dust collector will fill up a lot of that space in there. So for the time being, I'm keeping this open. I don't know if I'll do an access panel or something there. Still, still chewing on that. But for now, let's get the table saw outside so we can keep the dust out of here since it's such a nice day. And we'll slice that down the middle. Sometimes you find good deals on Facebook Marketplace. That was a $150 cobalt table saw that came with some extra parts and all the accessories. And that's definitely the way to go when it comes to cutting some of this stuff down. And the wheels that are on there make it so easy just to roll out. So we've got our two side pieces cut. Let's get those on there and go from there. Never enough clamps. Sometimes you need to pull out all the old ones too. Even though this is not a glue up, I'm just using screws in case I need to disassemble this because I know myself pretty well. So let's get these screwed and we'll move on to the other side. We've got our sides screwed down nice and tight and again nothing is glued here in case I need to take anything off and replace some side parts or if when, when we get to the dovetail cuts for the micro jig system if something goes kind of sideways we can just unscrew this and replace the plywood but for now the next step will be to cut those micro jig slots and we'll go from there. This is just temporarily set up here with the hose here. I had some vacuuming to do. So I just clamped that down and connected the vacuum connector. And we cleared out some of the spaces in the shop. As far as mounting this dust collector goes, it's got some interesting vibrations. If it's on a solid surface, if it's on asphalt, if it's on something really, really firm, you don't feel any vibrations. In the shop here, when I tried to mount it on the wall with the parts that it came with, the vibrations were pretty extreme. And I tried putting rubber between where it mounted to the wall, as well as extra insulators between the bolts, and nothing would stop that vibration down. And it was, it was quite something. It would rattle the windows and you'd feel it in your feet through the, through the floor. So what we ended up doing here was just making a box. And this is just sitting in here. And we've got lots of cut up foam. These are just the interlocking squares that you can get from Amazon or eBay or anywhere else. And we just cut those up so this sits in kind of an insulated base. And it can move a little bit, but it's not going to wander anywhere. And in this location, we don't have any vibration or very minimal vibration through the building here. And that's what we're going to go with. It makes getting to the bag pretty easy. I may do some slots or some coverage here just to kind of clean it up visually, but for now that's what we're going with as far as mounting the dust collector goes. The PVC pipe that we've got in place here, it does go over to the CNC with this dust boot and we connect and we're all hung there. This piece right here is just for visual purposes. This is not connected right now, so this is just sitting on here. We will cut a hole through the base here. I'll use a longer run of this. We'll run that through and then we'll connect it to the dust collector under there. The micro jig slots will go over to somewhere around here. So we'll use all this space on the left. We'll run some vertically and horizontal on the side piece here so that we can clamp 90 degree stuff. We'll do that on the other side as well. 
and that gives us some nice space on the side here for some more French cleats, some storage, some boxes. I'm sure that space will be put to use. The temporary PVC pipe that I had in place there just to mark a vertical spot, a vertical hole, has been removed. So we'll start a hole through here, cut this out, and then put the larger piece of PVC there in place and connect that up to the dust collector. PVC pipe all in place. And we've got our hose run to the dust collector. So everything's nice and tight and solid here. The air suction through the pipe and over to the CNC is very, very strong. So we're looking good there. As far as this, this just pops out of here. We could actually put a little snout on the end there and kind of clean things up as well. We've got lots of extra room here so we can cover the whole CNC base. And the next thing we're going to do is move on to cutting the dovetails which the, with the match fit system in the top. That should be kind of cool. Moving on to our match fit system. When I first designed this sort of bench enclosure for the dust collection and the match fit, my plans were to cut all the grooves in the top here. And when I built my guides and held them down, clamped them down, I thought they were pretty secure, but they started to slip. And from a distance, these look relatively straight. But when you get close to them, you can see there's some pretty nasty waves through here. And that's just driving me crazy. The other thing that I don't like is kind of the two-tone color here, where you can see the plywood different colors under there. So they work. I can slide these through, and they are strong. But I'm just, this is just bothering me the way this looks. So we're going to go in a little bit different direction. I picked up some MDF from a local hardware store and I had them cut this down on their panel saw so we could lighten the load a little bit. A three quarter inch sheet of MDF is about a hundred pounds so for one person lugging this around the individual sheets helped and these are the rough dimensions for what we're going to do for the bench system here. What we're going to do is we're going to have a top piece, two side pieces, and then an end piece here. So it's kind of like a cap or a crown that's going to go over this. And the other nice thing about using it this way is we can route these dovetail lines outside. When I cut these in here, of course, the dust was insane. And MDF is going to make even more of that stuff. So it would be nice to get that out of the shop. As far as holding the MDF on here, we're going to put a 2x4 across around all the outside here so that the sheet can just sit on here and then we can screw it in so it's got some more support from underneath. As far as using MDF for this match fit system, there are different views on this. I've seen the videos that show that if you really push this in the wrong direction you can tear it out. Plywood is stronger, but if these are used the way that they're kind of designed to with just clamping force down, the MDF should be absolutely fine. And on the match or the uh, micro jig website and some of their videos, they actually show using MDF. So we're going to use that. We're going to see how it works. And if it ends up tearing out or not working, then we'll come up with something else. But for the time being, that's what we're going to go with. We have our match fit 14 degree dovetail bit mounted in the router. And this is the jig we're going to use for the long run here and this will just slide up and down. The router will sit between there so we can do these cuts and then as far as the long cuts here we'll just make another jig up so that we can put that in the other direction and that'll work for the top part. Everything should be nice and true and then for the side pieces here I guess we'll make some more jigs. They go together pretty fast. Keep everything true we could just clamp things, but I really want this to be tight, and uh, we'll see if this works. We've got our lines marked on the MDF for the top piece. We're doing four inch squares here. That just seemed to feel about right. For our jig here, we've got our flat surface set up on this side, 
and it's two and a half inches down from the flat there to the dovetail bit, which will put us about here. None of this stuff has to be super exact. We'll just line this up with our line there. Do our cut, it's gonna make a groove through here, and then we'll just keep on trucking through there. And there are lots of ways to do this. I've seen people make different jigs and do different setups, but this is working really well for me. And these are coming out nice and clean. And we just slide it up, line it up with the next line, and do a cut. The other nice thing about having this frame, this jig on the end, is that we're minimizing tear out because we've got a hard surface against it. So um, I'm not making a channel first, so this is a little bit harder on the router bit, but we're cutting through pretty well. And jig number two for the long runs. Those cuts that we made already are beautiful. So straight and so clean. So let's get going on this and we'll do our alternating cuts. There's our top piece all cut out. I've cut MDF before, but not this much MDF before, and boy does this make a mess. Definitely an outside project. Can't imagine doing this inside. But we've got our top piece, so let's get this inside and start planning out our sides. And there's the top piece. Beautiful cut lines. There's our finished match fit micro jig system clamp down system i think they came out really really cool and i like having the dust collector kind of tucked away underneath for all of our cnc stuff and i think this will be very useful for holding stuff down fun project the versatility is really really awesome for the end here i think we're going to do some sort of vise and we'll either use a two by four or two by six and probably see and see some clamps that'll go in there so that'll give us a nice big outside clamping space as far as how true this is i think we're looking pretty good here that's good enough for me that's on this angle and on this angle i think we're looking pretty good too fun project. Thanks very much for taking a look.